Um, are you guys still paying attention to this investigation to the entire Russia collusion hoax? You remember that one where the Democrat Party, bef the, the day Trump was sworn in, all, was already saying it's time to impeach him because Russia and Trump worked together to hack the elections somehow, completely ignoring uh, Joseph Mifsud and George Papadopoulos and Nellie Orr and Bruce Orr and Peter Stroke and P Lisa Page and, and a Andrew McCar uh, uh was M M Andrew, what's his name? Uh, James Clapper, James, uh, Jim Comey, all of these people that were working in tandem to frame the president and other Republican candidates. I don't know if you guys have been following this. John Solomon, a reporter who used to, who's very, very well respected, he's won awards. He's been on top of this for the last three years, every week, and you guys have to hear what he just said. He's saying, right here in this interview, this has been going on, an, a federal investigation the whole time, and he's saying right here, indictments are coming out. You guys, you have to hear this, you gotta My hear this. Tonight, investigative reporter John Solomon, editor-in-chief of his new media outlet, Just the News. John, great to have you with us. Uh, more and Good more be is you, being revealed. Uh, but it all, it, it's great to have you. I, and, and more and more is being revealed but it all is much the same thing. It's all about FBI official political corruption. Uh, and this is even uh, more emphatically damning uh, because it's very clear that the FBI under President Obama knew that a Russian uh, intelligence operation was being run, a disinformation campaign, uh, and with the help of an MI6, former MI6 operative, who was at the center of the FBI investigation and effort to overthrow the president, uh, the, the, the man who would become uh, the president of the United States. Uh, this is outrageous. And it gets more outrageous by the day because no one's been held accountable. Yeah, uh, listen, in my worst nightmare, I could never imagine what would have come out this week. The level of information that the FBI had that raised red flags that they should have never, not even for a moment, entertained Christopher Steele as a human source, as a confidential informant. Is not if you don't know what he's talking about, last week it was uh, through different investigations and data being released by internal documents and memos within the FBI, came to be clear that the key source, the reason the entire uh, Russia, Trump, peeing on prostitutes in hotels, a collusion to hack the election. All of this came from one source. His name was Carter Page. That sprung the entire investigation, the entire uh, conspiracy theory that you heard on the news nonstop. Internal documents before anything happened from 2015 and 2016 all pointed saying that Carter Page cannot be trusted, that his sources cannot be trusted, and that everything that he was providing them regarding Trump and Russia was verifiably false. It's outrageous and they went ahead with it anyway and recycled it through multiple departments to make it look a little more official and then went through with now it. Now overwhelming, overwhelming evidence. Let's think of the things we know. One of the people he was talking to was a Russian intelligence official who was under surveillance by us. They, they had a separate FISA on him, yet they were taking Christopher uh, Steele's word that that was credible information. His other source disowned it. He's paid by Hillary Clinton. Some of his information is disproven right away. He exaggerates his record at MI6. All of these things came out this week. Christopher Steele should never have been shown a door inside the FBI. And instead, we sustained two and a half years of an investigation into false allegations, put this country and our president through an unnecessary process. Unnecessary. This was an attempt to overthrow the president. This was an attempt to align the entire FBI with Russian intelligence objectives and missions. And this should result not in a discussion about uh, you know, the unseemliness of a, uh, a sordidly politically corrupt officialdom of the FBI under President Obama. It should be about a sinister cabal operating in the intelligence agencies, the FBI and the Justice Department to overthrow a president. And we have been talking about, we have not been talking about the wrong things, but our leadership in Washington has been talking about the wrong things and feeding us pablum when in point of fact, they are refusing 
to bring these people to justice. And I, I say refusing. This is outrageous that we're having this discussion well, in 2020. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just outrageous. We're talking about four years ago. Yeah, no, it's taken a very long time. And part of the reason is the FBI and the intelligence community are very good at obfuscating and hiding the truth, whether they redact things, claim they're classified, falsified documents, which they did in this case. They have done a good job. But I will say this, there is some fairly significant evidence at this very moment, this week, the last couple of weeks, Lou, that there is some criminal investigative activity that I think will result in some actions coming out soon. It's not gonna be a lot. Don't expect 10 or 12 indictments, but there could be a handful of indictments and much more information. And I think one very important thing, the FBI had had something right. There was a campaign that was taking Russian information and trying to influence the election. It just wasn't Donald Trump's campaign. It was Hillary Clinton through the person of Christopher Steele and his Russian informants. Um, that has to be resolved. And, and one of the documents that are still sitting out there unchallenged, the intelligence assessment. We said, our intelligence committee said that uh, the Russians were trying to help Trump win Hillary lose. That does not appear to be the case from the new body of evidence. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been clear for a long time, Frank. Wow. He said right there, expect a handful of indictments. Indictments meaning we have enough information, we have enough solid evidence, it's time to take you to court. Wow. This is huge. And obviously there's speculation abound of who will be indicted. Well, James Comey seems like an obvious target. John Brennan, Jim Clapper, all three of them under testimony lied. Uh, you could expect you, I mean, Peter Stroke and Lisa Page, wow, there was so much clear evidence of treason between the two of them and then they and lying and cover up. Who else? I mean, so many names. And it'll be very interesting to see how this pans out. But I wanted to make an episode about this. This isn't going to be a long episode. I just wanted to remind everyone, do not, get, uh, you know, do not let this get away from you. Do not forget, it looks like within the coming days, we could see indictments on the Russia collusion, which once and for all will finally be breaking some of the facade that the fake news pushing media, whether it's the newspapers or the cable news or whoever, have been pushing a fake story. And you know, my question is always going two steps further. Okay, so they make indictments. What else will come out in discovery at this court case? What else will happen when the, the, the media who have been pushing this narrative for three years in their face, in court, in front of judges, live in front of the national television, all have the evidence A, B, and C laid out in front of the American people? What will be the consequence towards the media people? I don't know, but keep, keep close tabs on this. I know I will, and I'll keep you posted as well. My name is Ryan Dirks. I'm running for Missouri's 5th Congressional District, and I approve this message. Thank you.